Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing very, very nice. I'm sending a lot of hugs and positivity to all of you. Hi, if you're new, welcome to the channel. I really hope you enjoy the content. If you do, please do consider subscribing. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I have read in the month of September. I think there are about 15 books. I have not posted since quite a few days. That is because I felt sick. I have not shot and I have not posted even an Instagram story in the past like 10 days or something because I got a viral and I always thought that a viral is supposed to be like super oh okay you got it like you got cold for two three days and then it was completely fine but that's not what happened i felt exhausted and so so weak for like a whole week last week and so i did not work at all but this week i am back to work even now you may feel like my voice is a little bit weird so please excuse it because like my cough and all has still not left me i don't know when it will i'm not going to talk about them in the sequence in which i have read them because i have forgotten it let's begin the video the first book i want to talk about is Two Egg Quest by Shreshtha Mukpanna. This is the story of two sisters, I guess. Are they sisters or are they friends? Two sisters or two friends who have found themselves in a very difficult situation, in a life or death situation, which is extremely adorable, honestly, when you're reading it, but it is a life or death situation. One of the sisters of friend Kit is frozen in fear and she does not know what to do and she has just sort of like given up. And the other sister or friend, I don't remember, Nala, she tries to snap it out of it and then you see the journey of these two people trying to get out of this life or death situation that is all i can tell you apart from that i think you should go into the story blind the highlight of the book is that the author sreshtha mopanna is actually an 11 year old and i went into the book thinking and expecting the writing style of an 11 year old and i was completely prepared and i was just like really fascinated and i wanted to see what the book is going to be like when an 11 year old has written it also, I love this cute little cover, but once I started reading it, this book was such a breath of fresh air. I had the best time ever. It was super cute and adorable and super duper nostalgic. Obviously, it is great for children because it is written by a child, but also if you are an adult, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. You guys know I love books from the perspective of a child, but reading a book that is from a perspective of children, but also written by a child was just out of the world and it was a super duper magical amazing experience i rated it four stars next up we have behind the net by stephanie archer the only reason i read this book was because destiny sidwell who is a booktuber read this book in a vlog i don't exactly remember which vlog but i will link it in the description you can go and check it out and she enjoyed the book so so much and she was giggling so much and i was not having a good day when i I read this book so in the evening i think i was reading something else yeah i think i was reading this by stephen king 11 22 63 but then i was like you know what i don't have the patience for that right now so i dropped that book and i thought of reading this book i read it on kindle and unlimited so i actually downloaded it in my phone and i got kindle unlimited like i bought the subscription and then i read the book because destiny loved it so much and even i wanted that giggly time for myself and it was all so worth it i did have the giggly time ever and this is like an amazing amazing rom-com book this is the story of Pippa Pippa yeah Pippa and Jamie Jamie is a hockey player and Pippa was there in his school so they were in the same school when they were kids but now it has been like 14 15 years since they have seen each other and Pippa needs a job and she is hired as the assistant of Jamie now Pippa remembers Jamie but she thinks that Jamie does not remember Pippa but the book has dual POV so you come to know that Jamie does remember Pippa the guy falls first and you get to see all of the adorable thoughts that he's having about her and how she she's feeling about him because of the dual pov so many lines i was like oh my god this is so so cute also i have never read a sports romance before i think i have not and this was my first sports romance and the reason i never got into sports sports romance was because i thought it's going to be very sporty and all of that sports information i would not want it but it actually turned out to be a lot of fun it is a very very spicy read the only one thing that i did not enjoy was like towards the end of the book towards the last 100 pages the plot went out of the window for some time and all there was was like a lot of spice or just like you know the romantic vibes and there was no plot going on and at that time i did get bored because anyhow rom-coms can get a little bit cliche and in that also if there's no plot then it gets too cliche for me so i was getting bored over there but apart from that it is an adorable book 
I rated it four stars. Next up, let's talk about 112263 by Stephen King, which I dropped. I DNF this book. I got like 100, 150 pages into the book i still have the bookmark over here and i was definitely enjoying it and i was also vlogging it because this was supposed to be my 100th book of 2023 so i was like so excited and i wanted my 100th book to be like a massive achievement and like very very special and i had very very high expectations for the book first of all because i have seen so many reviews on instagram and everybody simply loves it and secondly when i talked about it in my haul you guys also love it and so many of you said that it's was literally like a life-changing book and i was having fun but i dropped it after like 100 150 pages one because i just did not have the span to sit and read like such tiny font i do not like the format of this book i really wish i could get some other edition and i know that sounds very stupid but it is how it is so i started reading this book on kindle secondly i never got back to it because stephen king's writing as amazing as it is it was very simple also like the story in itself is very simple there were so many references that were being made in the book that i don't understand at all the lighting is not good wait oh my god the lighting was not good since then i'm so sorry about it this is the story of the jfk assassination the jfk assassination has already happened but the main character of the book travels back in time to go and protect the jfk assassination from happening now first of all i only know about the jfk assassination as much as the other person i am not like very very well versed in it second of all the book is set in the 1950s no 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 it's set in the 1970s or 80s and just like the mix of all of these references which are like so old I did not understand anything and I was feeling dumb here and there. Whenever the plot was going on, then it was completely fine because it was so interesting to read. But whenever I was going into the head of the main character and he was saying all of these things about, I don't know, some singers, some actors, some sort of like a reference, I did not understand what is going on. And so I just did not have the patience to sit and read the whole thing. And so I DNF'd it. However, <clears throat> I'm going to try and read it this month probably next week and I'm still counting it as my 100th book I have read so many books after this those books are going to be counted as the 100th book or whatever But I have just decided that this is going to be my 100th book which I have not yet finished So I will try to finish it this month I will still count it as my 100th book and we'll see how it goes I'm just waiting to like start feeling fine even like physically because even now I don't have the attention span to read anything I have not read anything this month anything at all i keep picking up books and i keep dropping them the next book is the center by aisha manazir siddiqui you guys the plot of this book has completely shocked me and every time I look at this cover, I remember what the book is like because the cover is giving off the exact vibes of the book and I'm just like spooked out all over again and I still cannot believe that I read something like this. So The Center is the story of The Center, which is an organization that promises that you can learn any language within 10 days, but it comes at a cost. So when you're reading it, you come to know what that cost is. And the main character of this book really, really, really wants to learn languages because she is, I think, Think a translator so if she learns difficult languages then it is going to be very good for her career some paragraphs were like so beautifully written that i had such amazing time reading it and then on the other hand the main character would do things that would make me question if i do like her or not because why are you doing that and i was just so confused but i had the best time being in the head of the main character this entire book is very interpretation friendly kind of a book where when you're reading it like i said the character do you like her do you not like her what do you think about her is she a good character a bad character it depends upon your interpretation the story itself depends upon your interpretation and the ending also is like a little bit like verity where you have to interpret what is going on so it was something completely different from what i have ever read something very unique and just like when the book was over i was like how on earth do these authors come up with such concepts i gave this book four stars next up we have amazing grace adams by fran littlewood this is the story of obviously amazing grace adams her name is grace adams who just one day decided in the middle of traffic that i'm going to leave everything that is going on the way it is and i'm going to start walking and i'm going to get my daughter back the way this book reads and the blurb reads i actually thought that this is going to be the story of this character who is just done 
with life and she's going to go all unhinged and she's just going to do the craziest things ever but none of those things happen <laughs> the book is written in different timelines and you get to see grace adams family life in one timeline like in the past and you get to see what she's doing right now after leaving her car every single time i read the past timeline i loved it every single time i was reading the present timeline i loved it it felt like essays to me is the thing because the past timeline and the present timeline they were not going well together and there were just so many things happening and they were not getting knit together properly because of which i could not enjoy this book as a story plus everything that happens in the first like 50 pages of the book is what happens till like the last 40 50 pages of the book the plot is so utterly slow and that would have been completely fine because i don't always read books for the plot i i, I can read for the characters too but the characters also don't know a lot about them the character arcs are there are no arcs in the book and so i did not enjoy this book at all and i was actually very pissed because i was actually really really enjoying the writing style and i was enjoying the individual stories of what was going in the past timeline what is going on right now but every single time i moved to the next chapter and the vibe would completely change and i would be like you know i can't leave it in the middle because oh i just hope it keeps getting better but it did not and i kept read reading it and i did finish it but i did not like it because i like the writing style and i did like like the different timelines and the different stories i still did give it 2.5 2.75 stars but in all i did not enjoy the book a lot so that's 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 it. Next up, we have Naked by Aditi Medirata, Medirata and Michaela Talwar. This is the story of a dead body, a naked dead body that is found in the beaches of Versova in Mumbai. It is just washed up on the shore and the dead body is actually of like this really, really famous influencer, Chinky. Other people are also called into the police station, like into the scene to see what actually happened and for the interrogation and you get to see all of the details of what actually happened. That is all I can tell you again you have to get into the book blind because it is a thriller but i think it is a literary thriller this is the kind of thriller where the plot is really 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 interesting so you really want to read it but at the same time the characters also are so interesting and you get to get into the mind of the characters so you know who they are you know what is going on the pacing is literally perfect the writing style was beautiful and so many emotions so many things going on they're tied up so well together that you have a blast reading it when i was reading it i literally forgot to have lunch i started reading it and i just kept reading it and i forgot to have lunch and then in the evening it was so dark in the room and my brother was like why are you reading in darkness but i did not want to move so he switched on the light and then i only looked up after finishing this book just because of how amazing it was and how rich the characters were and how amazing the emotions were every single thing i loved this book so so much and i highly highly recommend it i gave this book a 4.5 star next up we have the premonition by banana yoshimoto it is translated from japanese by asa yoneda this is a story of a, a little girl but like a teenager she all this time thought that she has had the best childhood and she only remembered good things but because of this one particular thing everything that she remembers about her childhood is challenged and she sees everything in a very different different light it's a very short book so i read it literally in like what an hour two hours it had very eerie and haunting vibes throughout the book the writing was beautiful i was so shocked that it is such a short book and even then i got everything that the author was trying to convey and i enjoyed every single page of it so much the plot of the book is a little wobbly and so there were parts of it that i did not understand or i was also like getting irritated a little bit here and there but that sort of happens with me in Japanese literature because everything is not like so well defined when it comes to Japanese literature but the writing style was just so beautiful and the ending was so beautiful that once I finished the book and I was able to look at it as a whole that is when I was like wait what did I just read it felt like this hole in time that I had for like an hour or two where I was completely transported some somewhere else into a very different world into a very dark haunted but beautiful world and then when i finished the book i came back into the real world just that's just how beautiful the writing was i gave it 3.5 stars next up we have carrie soto is back by taylor jenkins reed this is the story of carrie soto who it was the greatest player of all times of tennis but then she retired because of a few reasons but then something happens because of which she has to come 
back. I remember reading this book right after Amazing Grace Adams. After Amazing Grace Adams, I had no idea what to do because why did I read that? Why did I force myself to read it? And before that, I had read 11, 20 to 63 and I had dropped it already. Basically, I was not getting the best reading experience. And so I knew that I had to go to the one author that I know will not disappoint me. Even though it's not going to be like an excellent book, I just know that she won't disappoint me. And so I turned to Taylor Jenkins read and so I started reading Gary Soto is back and she did not disappoint again I read this book in one sitting literally one sitting I started reading it on the weekend and so I was not able to like finish it on the weekend but on Monday as soon as I woke up I started reading it I did not get up before I finished it one because of the pacing how amazing the pacing is two because Gary Soto is yet another amazing beautiful bold and brash main female character and I loved her so so much so many things that she does honestly like if you ask me they were not completely wrong but yes they were like borderline rude or brash or whatever but I had the best time in reading it she is so confident she knows herself she knows her worth and she will take what she knows that she deserves I was putting this book off till now because I thought that there will be so much like tennis in it because Carrie Soto is a tennis player but tennis was explained in the most beautiful way ever where I actually really wanted to like start playing tennis myself I did put a story of me trying to hit shots with a tennis racket my brother used to play tennis and so we do have the racket at home and after reading this book I just wanted to play tennis myself that's just how interesting tennis became to me super duper easy to read you can even read it as a beginner please don't put it off simply because it is about tennis or whatever it is a beautiful beautiful read I gave it five stars my five star read of the month and talking about five star reads the next five star six star read that I had was Powerless by Lauren Roberts. This is a story of Payden and Kai. Payden is an ordinary and Kai is an elite. It is a romance fantasy. So in this fantasy world, the elites have powers and if you are an ordinary, the elites, like the royal family, they kill you because you are supposedly like deceased and you are going to infect the elites also and then the elites will also die. Like that is what the elites think. Payden is an ordinary but she poses as a mundane, which is like a person who has powers and she poses as a psychic because of some things here and there she has to go and face the trials it is a competition where you have to fight for your life fantasy plots are so complicated to explain and kai also is there in those trials because kai is the son of the king it's an enemies to lovers book and it was literally one of the best reads that i had in september this book and carrie soto were like the highlight of the month this is book one and i think it's going to be a trilogy so that is one thing that killed me but it is definitely one of the best romance like fantasy romances that i have read in almost a year the pacing was so good it is a slow burn book it has no spice in it and the slow burn was so good i have actually realized that slow burn may be like one of my favorite tropes at this point when it comes to romance and fantasy romance is definitely my genre and so i have decided to read a lot more fantasy romance in october that is if i can get to reading a book i highly 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 recommend recommend it it's also great for beginners again it's a part of a trilogy and the next book comes out next year that is one problem like if you're like me then it's going to be a problem but if you're not and you're okay then read this book next up we have summer of broken rules by kale walter which i think was the first book that i read in september this is the story of meredith who has lost her sister and so after like 18 months or like two years she has gone to an island because one of her other cousin is getting married and she had always gone with her sister sister over there but now she has to go alone and she's so sad but then she meets a boy over there and they sort of hit it off and also there is a game going on in the wedding itself which she always played with Claire but Claire is not there anymore so now she felt alone but then she met this guy and now they play together and they are helping each other and so it becomes the summer of broken rules I have never again read any summary YA book so this was my first summary YA book and I loved it 
every single second of it it was so much fun and seeing the chemistry between the two characters the way uh, Meredith was like all swoony about the guy their conversations their banter it was all so interesting so if you're looking for a YA romance then this is your book and it's definitely a must read I gave this book four stars next up we have Misery by Stephen King this is the story of this one woman who has kidnapped a very very famous author the author of Misery the author has actually killed Misery because he was just so tired of writing a book about Misery again and again but then Annie kidnaps him and she forces him to write a book where Misery comes back to life I also watched the movie the movie also was so so good there was literally everything amazing about this book except two things one the book within the book that Paul Sheldon was writing was also there and I did not enjoy that part at all I understand it adds element to the book so it's probably just my problem but I did not enjoy the part because every time I got into the plot that book would come and I don't care that about that book at all so like why am I reading about it and it would take me out of the vibe and secondly the same problem that I had with 11 20 to 63 there were references that made absolutely no sense to me those references were also there in the movie but like in the movie I did not care about the references you know because I was like it does not matter to me at all because I can see their expression I think that my problem with Stephen King is that his book books are very extremely movie like so when I'm reading it there are some parts which you have to visualize or which you know I would skip in a movie and I wouldn't mind it at all but I don't know what to skip in a book and what not to skip in a book or what it's okay like if I don't understand and I can just move on from it and that creates sort of like a reading problem for me because that takes me out of the story even though the writing style and the story in itself is so interesting the next book is Western Lane by Chetna Maru this is the story of these two sisters two or three sisters this family that has lost a mother and the entire family together is coping up with the loss of the mother and you get to see how they're coping up with it because they throw themselves into a game of squash the father is training them harder than ever and you just see how they react to their mother's loss when I got it it was long listed for the Booker Prize and now it is short listed for the Booker Prize and I think it definitely deserves it I just have never read a book that that is so real about how you deal with grief as a family the reality that I see myself around me when something happens and everybody is literally suffering but everybody is acting like everything is okay and they are coping with it in ways that they shouldn't cope in and they are being too hard on themselves and nobody is talking about what is actually going on all of those feelings were so well captured in the book it is said from the perspective of a teenager one of the sisters and reading that was super heartbreaking it was very subtle but super heartbreaking if you are in any way able to relate with it the main character the way she's growing up and the way she's realizing who she is for the first time ever was so fascinating to read beautiful writing beautiful story super relatable <laughs> and an experience of a lifetime definitely I love this book another five star read next up we have threads that bind which again is one of those books which I did not know is part of the series and I just started reading it out of nowhere because I think the concept is so interesting it is a story of the three sisters who are the descendants of fate and then later you come to know everybody every character in the book is a descend descendant of some sort of Greek god and one of the sisters is able to see the thread that binds you with the things that you love and one day she finds a guy who is bound to her with a thread and it is the thread of love the plot is so so interesting and so I was so excited to read it and I read it again in one setting but one it is part of a series which I did not know so that was a huge disappointment Two, the world building in this book is so complicated because there's just too much information to take in so many powers so many characters like a lot of characters and the stakes are not very high but then towards the end of the book it got like really really interesting so I think that the pacing of the book was not that good where it was like too slow or too fast and I was just getting like jumbled up in my head but that happens sometimes in the first book so I let it go and now I cannot wait for the second book at all because the way the book has ended ended and the way everything is built up I do think that the second book is going to be super duper interesting I give it a 3.5 stars next up we have I wish you all the best by Mason Deaver this is a story of Ben who comes out as a non-binary to their parents they were expecting a completely different reaction but they got a completely different reaction and their parents kicked 
them out of the house and now you see their journey with how they cope up with whatever has happened and how they find themselves out of this situation which they did not even know is ever going to happen in their life this was such a heartbreaking book just listening to everything that was going on in ben's mind i was like oh my god like i just want to give a hug i genuinely just want to get go into the book and give a hug to the main character but also it was so tender so beautiful and it felt so real rated this one also five stars and in the end we have the school for good mothers by jessamine chan this one woman who is trying to take care of her child and take care of her work at the same time so one day for work she goes out and she leaves her child alone but then her neighbors hear that the child is crying and then they call the police and the police takes the child in custody and uh, calls the mother and then they declare that the mother is not fit to be a mother and so she has to be retrained as a mother i was totally amazed by how amazing this book is written and how amazingly it was able to again convey so many things that is going on in the real world things that people don't voice but they definitely think all the pressures of being a parent and especially a mother all of it written in a fictionalized manner in this impactful way so it was definitely an amazing read i gave it 4.5 stars because i just thought that a lot more emotion could be there in the book everything just felt a little bit of like matter of factly i was just like craving those emotions also when it comes to motherhood or how the mother feels about her child and how she's feeling in the middle of all of these other mothers in the school where all of these mothers are being trained because the concept was so good and the school was so good and everything was just like so so good it was only lacking a little bit of emotion for me and so it's not a five star but apart from that i think it is a must read like even if you are not a reader and with that we come towards the end of the video and the sun is like on my face at this point and so the video is orange now that i'm looking at it i really hope you guys enjoyed it i'm sorry if my voice was not good enough and it was like nasal but i do hope you got at least one recommendation out of the video i'll see you guys very very soon